traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homelands of the Métis Nation. For thousands of years, Indigenous people walked this land and knew it to be the center of their lives and their spirituality. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Welcome to all of those who are joining us in our online ministry. I am Carol Fletcher, and I am part of the team ministry here, and I will be joined shortly by Jeff Cook. We are in uh, Transcona Memorial United Church. It is Lynn Mavens, who is on the organ and piano benches today. The choir is under the direction of Crystal Shaw. We are gathered here in in Treaty One territory as we worship together. I invite you, as you are able, to stand and to join us as we sing our introit. <laughs>
of prayer printed in our order of service bulletin and distributed online. Let us pray. God, your faithful love inspires us to worship. Your creative spirit inspires us to acts of neighborly justice. Your amazing grace invites us to hope. During this time of worship, inspire us and deepen our faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The choir sings for us, you will be found.
scripture reading comes from Luke's Gospel. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly, and who was ill, and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people. It is he who built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore I did not presume to come to you. But only speak the word, and let my servant be healed, for I also am one set under authority, with soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at it. And turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. And may God speak to us through this reading of scripture. Our hymn is in Voices United, number 651, Guide Me All Thou Great Jehovah. The conclusion of this hymn, those uh, wishing to go for their children's programming, uh, by joining Brenda at the front. Hymn 651, Guide Me All Thou Great Jehovah. Jesus. Yes. Some of us have been traveling with him to villages and towns. This is 
is the first time I've been to Capernaum, so. Then welcome to Capernaum, Ruth. Thank you. Have you been here long? The unit I command has been stationed here for about three years. I heard that some of the Jewish elders said that you had befriended the Jewish people. They said you built a synagogue for them. Yes, our, our Caesar doesn't want trouble from the people we rule. If we can keep them content, they're less likely to require more stringent forms of management. When I hear, heard the elders talking about what you've done, I got the impression that building the synagogue was more than just good policy for you, though. You are a friend of Jesus? Yes. I think that means I can trust you. Yes, you can trust me. If you're a friend of Jesus, you aren't likely to go telling other Roman soldiers what I say to you. No, I, I won't tell any Roman soldiers. I will tell Jesus, but no one else. I believe you. Yes, I... I built the synagogue. Well, I made sure that the synagogue got built. I signed some of my soldiers to help and to oversee the construction. And yes, I could justify it as good policy, but it was more than that. How was it more? I find myself curious about this God of the Jews probably more than curious. There's something, you have one God, we Romans, many gods. I know, many gods and many temples dedicated to many gods. Many gods, Jupiter, Juno, Mars, Minerva, Neptune, Venus. Quite a cast of characters. And most of them are characters. Doing whatever they want with whomever they want. We keep offering tributes and sacrifices trying to please them, to keep them on our side, to make sure they have more good days than upset at us humans' days. I've always thought that some of your gods seemed, well, what should I say, a little self-centered? I, uh, I started listening to the stories of your gods. Stories of gods trading the earth. And there were no heavenly battles, there were no monsters to be slain. Your god just spoke, and there was light, and water, and plants, and animals, throughout, and humans. Throughout history, our God has spoken to many people in many ways, and spoken through many people, always telling us that God knows us, always telling us that no matter how bad things seem to get, there will be a new day, always reminding us to care for the poorest, the most vulnerable, the foreigners amongst us. That's what got me. All you Jews living under our rule, under Rome's rule, kept in check by the greatest military force in the world. But you still trust your God. You still think that one day the Roman Empire will be gone, but you'll still be here worshiping your God. You can take a lot of things away from us, but you can't take away our faith. And I heard of your prophets. Said that Jesus wanted you to do well, what you just said. Care for the poor, the most vulnerable, the foreigners. You won't find that in Caesar's playbook. And I started to wonder if your God, your God who seems to care about so many people, if your God could actually care about a Roman centurion, could actually care about me. And what did you decide? I decided to build a synagogue to make sure that the people of Capernaum could gather to worship this odd God who cared. And why did you send some elders to Jesus? I'd heard about a Jewish rabbi named Jesus. I'd heard that he and some companions were showing up in villages and towns and heard that, heard that strange things seemed to happen when he was around. I can assure you that strange things do happen when Jesus is around. Strange things, amazing things, wondrous things. I've seen someone who has been blind all their life suddenly be able to see their neighbor. I have seen the person who couldn't go to limb walk away whistling 
after meeting Jesus, I've seen hungry people in a wilderness sharing a feast prepared for them with just a few fish and loaves of bread. I've seen people who seem possessed by demons be free, be at peace with themselves. I heard all those things, and I thought, thought I'm a centurion. I have a hundred trained soldiers ready to do whatever I say. I can give the word and they will build a bridge over the deepest river. I can give the word and they will burn a village to the ground. I can give the word and they can march into a town and everyone in that town will be filled with fear. So, my God speaks and life begins. You speak and lives might end. I can give the orders and make so much happen, but I can't allow the blind to see, the lame to walk. I can't drive out the demons, the demons who haunt others, the demons who haunt me. And you couldn't help your slave who was ill, that was going to die. No, I couldn't do anything to help. Then I heard that Jesus was in Capernaum. He was a rabbi. So I asked some of the Jewish elders to go to him on my behalf. And Jesus came to your house. But you didn't even come outside. You sent some friends. You said that you did not feel worthy to have Jesus enter your house. I may have built a synagogue, but I am not a Jew. And Jesus, your, your God is with us, Jesus. I wanted to believe that God cares about me, but I wasn't sure wasn't sure that I dare presume that this rabbi from God should enter my home. So I sent messengers. But you still thought that Jesus could help, that Jesus could save your slave. You believed that our God just had to speak and the gift of life would be given. Jesus seemed very impressed by the words you sent. You said that you were also a person under authority and you could say to your soldiers, come or go, and they would obey. And I also obey orders given by others. That's what I saw in Jesus. I think he is under the authority of God. That he is authorized to free people from the illnesses and from the demons. Yes, Jesus is under authority. 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 Perhaps Jesus knows God to be the creator of life, the author of life. Maybe God is authoring a new story for people on earth, a story of compassion and healing and forgiveness and freedom from the demons that haunt us. That makes sense to me. The Roman Empire, we're authoring a story about our own greatness and power, but Jesus he seems to be part of a story that isn't about that kind of greatness and power. The Empire doesn't heal anyone's slave. It's done only by someone helping God Write a new story. Author a new world. Hmm. So why are you looking for Jesus now? Say thank you. Your slave is alive? Just while my friends were talking to Jesus, my slave suddenly opened his eyes. His fever was gone. He was breathing normally. He even said he was hungry. Asked for some food. Yes, he was healed. He was well again. He was alive. I will tell Jesus, I will tell you something else that Jesus said, something your friends may not have heard, something Jesus said about you, about your understanding of authority. What did he say? Jesus said that not even in all of Israel had he found such faith. I think, Marcus, that you can be assured that God does care, even about a certain Roman centurion. And I suspect that you may find that not only your slave has been made well, but I suspect that you will find that you don't have to wrestle as much with some of your demons from now on. Ruth, tell Jesus, I say thank you. And may God bless him. And may God bless you, Centurion Marcus. Amen. And amen. We join in singing a hymn, which is an anthem, Rain Down. You'll find the insert with your bulletin.
been placed on the table in the sanctuary. Our offerings have been made online through the PAR program or through Canada Helps. Our offerings have been mailed to the church. Our offerings have been generous. Our offerings of gifts, of money, our offerings of time and talent, and all of these are brought to God at this time. We offer a prayer speaking together. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, we offer our gifts to you this day. Receive our offerings of time and talent that we share. Help us to care for others through these gifts. Help us to work for peace and justice in our world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We come to prayer, singing, Lord, listen to your children pray. God for humans to see your image in one another, 
to discover your presence in one another. We pray for a world without racism, without the many expressions of prejudice and fear and hate that threaten and divide so many people. We pray, God, for societies, corporations, individuals to repent of practices and lifestyles that have contributed to climate change and to changes in weather patterns that now threaten the existence and our existence on this planet. We pray, God, for those who are unemployed, those who cannot afford housing, those who struggle to buy groceries as prices increase. We pray for economic systems to follow the biblical call to ensure the well-being of all people. We pray, God, that we have the vision and courage and faith to be people of love, people who live with respect for one another, for all your creatures, for all your creation. We pray that we be healed and transformed to live as your children, as bearers of your blessing, as people of your new creation. We offer all our prayers as companions of the risen and resurrected Christ. And together we join in saying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is in Voices United number 600. Yeah. Our service of worship has ended in this place, but our service of God continues as we go forth from this place to be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Let us go forth knowing we go in the amazing grace of God, in the transforming friendship of Jesus the Christ, and in the healing power and presence of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen.